play something? Yeah. Now you're gonna have to tune it, you know. Oh yeah. Lies here on me. The mighty was near. I'll tell you where to go. Right upon that breeze. Watch yourself. eternity wherever you may go wherever you may do you'll never walk alone I will be with you never walk alone Walk alone. You'll never walk alone. Never walk alone. <laughs> the 
Let's go. I like it. So we say, Vat's not to like? Yeah. <laughs> So what about that, um, she's moving in? Oh, uh, yeah. I will, I'll show you that, uh, let's see here. i get a little closer. I'll tune it up real quick. Are you from uh, Houston area? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a venue there called Super Happy Funland. Really? It's in uh, it's, it's near. It's in like it's like an old uh, kind of industrial area. Uh, near train tracks and stuff. And uh, we'll see. Ah. Uh,
Ow, man, I've never heard it sound so good. That's great. That's what brought me over here. That is such a happy song. Yeah. I just love it. Thanks. Well, that was a... <coughs> Excuse me. That was um, a friend of mine. Um, we, I drove a U-Haul um, and moved her from Charlotte, North Carolina to San Diego, um, which actually I still have an outstanding... Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's just say I met some lawmen uh, in Texas. Uh, but, it, yeah, so I wrote that after uh, moving her into her apartment. And she had things like um, marble tables and things like that. And I was the sole mover. So I was delirious after driving across, across the country and... and Lifting things that were three times my weight, and uh, sat down and wrote that song in about as long as it takes to sing it. <laughs> so, no way, yeah. really. Yeah, I've and never, you show I've me that riff. I've never that... written anything like that before. It just it just happened. It was weird. Pentatonic scale. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, I don't all I, I I don't know the names of anything. You know I. Um... <laughs> Leon Russell, I'm a big Leon Russell fan. Oh, yeah? And he came to uh, Lake Eola recently. Huh. And his guitarist uh -huh. was up on stage playing a Stratocaster, and man, he was just ripping, ripping the songs away. And I walked up after the set, and I said, I really admire your guitar playing, and, you know, I'm learning guitar. Um, so that's like a... Those are intervals, right? And that's a pentatonic scale, he goes... I've got no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But he's great. I mean, he's playing with uh, Leon Russell. Yeah. He said, I just, you know, I just play the guitar. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know about all this theory. Yeah. 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 I tried. I tried. But I can't. can't learn that stuff. Well, you, I, I like mean, the object is to play, right? Exactly, I mean, I just yeah. give it all names. I'm just, I'm happy when it... When I come close to what I hear, when I get to play close to what I want to hear, and that's 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 the goal. So, what's the? I don't know. Give me some background, cause uh, I read a little bit on your website. Uh -huh. Local, uh, your local boy. Uh huh. Yeah. And your your influences are blues and uh, I. You know, I read on your Facebook page, like five or six influences, and I didn't recognize any of them. Oh. So I, you know, I don't know. Those uh -huh. are those are bluegrass or blues or? I'm trying to think. Uh, mostly blues. Mostly blues. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, my first um, albums were, you know, Muddy Waters, and uh, I love, right now I'm really loving Mississippi John Hurt. Now, yeah, and Leo Kotke. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, How about that? Is Leo definitely? Well, you realize that Leo's pretty awesome, but Mississippi John Hurt is very awesome. You know, <laughs> Leo's a shredder, though. He's he's amazing. He used to come I to love Houston. His voice too. Yeah, he used to come to Houston. He played the Agora Ballroom in Houston. Oh, I've heard I'd go see him for four or five bucks, and oh. it's just incredible. Yeah, he's definitely one of my heroes. And he does have a unique voice. Yeah. His voice is really, yeah. Baritone. Yeah, it's huge. And he's doing all that on a 12, you know, a lot of that on a 12 string. Too. And he's picking like that. Bojo made his guitars. Really? Yeah, yeah. Man, I got to look at some pictures. Yeah. You know, like yeah. go back and see. What you ought to do is go visit Bojo. I would love to. Yeah, because I'm sure he's got a lot of stories to tell. Did you say he's in uh, St. Pete area? He's, um... Estes, not Estes. It's just near Bradenton. And, okay. Um, I can't think of the name of the city. It begins with an E. It's you know a little outlying community from mm -hmm. Tampa, Sarasota. I would love to. I love um, you know, some But I mean, are you are you principally a guitar player? Yeah. I also I'll show you. I, I'm I'm starting to make all my own stuff. Yeah. And um, uh, I, a lot live I'll play lap steel and. Ukulele yeah, I read about and that. And banjo yeah, stuff. and you find you find the wood on your parents' property. Yeah, yeah, that's a Civil War era property. It's been in your family that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, there's a lot of crazy stories about that. I 
really want to do a concept album or a history album about the family. Like there's there's a evidently at one point. Basically, there was there was the, the train went through there. Yeah. They took it out in the sixties or something. Yeah. But there was basically a post office, the train station, post office and the train station, post office and the train station. That's it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the uh, and then our, our neighbor is who's still a farmer. Our family and his family are two of the oldest ones there, and both families are still there. And uh, at some point, there was a dispute either over women watermelon or labor prices as as <laughs> happens yeah <laughs> and uh, especially watermelon yeah the watermelon flavor i, I kind of knowing my family i kind of think it may have been the watermelon yeah uh and my addiction to watermelon ah but uh <laughs> so i can understand hi i'm Lars bedell and i am a watermelon <laughs> addict, addict. <laughs> hi Lars. hi welcome <laughs> but uh he uh uh, my uh, basically on one one of those things there was a father and a son who worked at the depot and then uh, at the post office actually and then a father and son who worked at the depot mm -hmm. shots were fired and I think the son was killed or something and the father was injured and my the, the, the uh, telegram was at the depot so the father or brother or whatever waited until his his brother or whatever I, I, I you know obviously the family thing I, I'm not 100 percent on it was either the son or the or brothers waited until he got out of town <clears throat> and then uh, telegraphed it in to Gainesville no that's way. the nearest wow. city and uh, turns out he went straight to Tampa got on a boat and I think initially went to Cuba and then ended up uh, people from Evanston it's a Population seventy, right? Um, ended up meeting him in World War One in Spain. He had a totally different name and all this other stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, uh, he was a fugitive, right? Yeah, uh, murder. Yeah, God. And uh, turns out they also people from Edison found him in uh, Washington State um, years later, and so we have some family in Washington State with a different name and. All of this stuff. Oh, you come from um, aus auspicious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> however, that expression Stalker, goes. Yeah. 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 Watermelon. Breeding. You ought to do a, a watermelon tribute. Yeah, I should. Well, in, in, a, in a certain way, isn't everything about watermelon? You know, you think about it. Some level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, it takes a minute. Yeah, there's, there's, I learned, uh, actually stayed in my grandpa's, uh, over Christmas. I got, we had so many family members. I stayed in his, my grandpa's office and, uh, who's, pa who's passed away, but I found a, uh, uh, what's it? Willamette University in Washington State. Mm -hmm. Uh, my grandmother's great, great grandpa was one of the first guys in the Northwest Territory up there and helped found Willamette. Wow. I, I had no idea. And originally, are you guys, um, what's the heritage? What? Um, well, my grandpa's side is uh, cut from the Pyrenees. Oh, and, okay. And um, and then grandma's, uh, yeah, my dad's dad is Pyrenees. My mom's side are uh, Quebec and then so, dad's side is French and probably British or something. Actually, that's anyway. And then <laughs> mom's side is uh, is uh, Latvian. <gasps> no and, way! Uh -huh. My dad's Latvian. Really? No way! What a coincidence! Yeah. I've been there. Really? To Dogoff Fields. That's where my dad's from. That's cool. I've been to Riga and Dogoff Fields. Boy, have I got some stories to tell there. I bet. Prost. <laughs> <laughs> that's really weird. Yeah. Fidel. Uh, Latvian, Latvian and um, Lithuanian. And Irish. I, Latvian and Irish. Uh -huh. So she can she can fight and she can drink. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, mom is a very lightweight. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> She's small too, so. She's so, still alive? My mom is, yep. Yeah. 
the uh, and it, was she born in the states? Yeah, um, uh, I don't know really when the the good Latvian Jews. I don't know when they came over. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, my dad came over in thirty nine. Uh -huh. He was actually naturalized in the Persian Gulf Command. He came over. He got drafted six months later, and they go, "Son, you're an American." Wow. Now go fight. Now go fight. He had a, he's got albums. He had such a great time in the in the World War Two. Really? No kidding. Well, what did he do? He was a quartermaster corps, which was like handing out supplies. Okay. And he was also an interpreter because he spoke Russian. Okay. okay. He said that it was so cool. They gave him a jeep and everything. Wow. Wow. He kind of got to hang out. Oh, he, he loved just it. Left and, he and loved it, was safe. it. He loved it. Yeah. Relatively. And he would never. Drive, he's so all-American, he would never drive a foreign car. He drives really? a, a Ford Escort station wagon. Really? To this day? Yeah. Wow. Oh, he loves his BMW. He? He's 90, he'll be 92 in May. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, his favorite expression is, I can still kick your ass, dude. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's rad. Yeah. That my dad's mom is uh, 80, just turned 88. Really? But her uh, her husband was a um, uh, my grandpa was a uh, a World War II um, he flew PBYs. Uh, oh wow! Navy. Uh, they they basically uh, would hit the uh, ships around in the South Pacific, and they they basically carried two torpedoes, and they would uh, like your ship would be going, they would have to come at the ship from the side, and drop the torpedo. And while firing, and then go back, and then do it again, wow. and with the two torpedoes. And they had just, they had, if you look at them, they had like gun on the nose, gun on top, gun on both sides, and gun on the back. You know, and that's it's kind of like. <laughs> but, it's a living. Oh my gosh! I, I found this after I found that Willamette U University thing. I found his his flight logs. Really? Yeah, it was pretty, and uh, pretty wild because he was he was right right there when the bombs were dropped it was right in the area for like a few days I, I need to look at it you know like when exactly they were dropped and where he was but he was there and uh, and then a few days later it says war is over nice and then there's like two more logs because he like flew to Hawaii and oh, wow. San Diego and, and then it's done it's kind of cool wild. I was just listening to some John Lennon this morning Speaking of war is over. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That came on last night at the gig. Did it really? Yeah. On the, just on the, you know, on my iPhone. <laughs> Through the PA. So you said that you were about to release five more songs, right? An EP? Did I read correctly? Uh, or is that an old entry in your... Uh, yeah, it may, may have been an old one. Okay. definitely going to do a full album for the next five but I've only I've released two I like to call them long EPs you know because <laughs> according to well, like 1970s standards I released two short albums you know because <laughs> usually an EP is what three to five songs or something like that so what's the inspiration I mean what do you you know like you do your own songwriting right yes so is it just situations memories aspirations maybe things any any uh, particular? Excuse me. Um, I'm trying to think about songs. <laughs> they, uh, or just random. Um, usually, it's kind of like what we were talking about, uh, you know, in practicing and stuff. You uh, when you turn turn your control off. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, I'm guessing uh, so. Uh, that I think that's kind of where the songs come from. So it's it's all stewing and it's in there, you know. And, and uh, I try to go for with most of my uh, songs. Um, it's kind of like uh, I mean I've been really getting in Tom Waits. Yeah. And half of what he does is just words that feel good. Okay. You know, like it feels right, and then, 
and why does it it maybe feels right because it is right you know I guess as well like the meanings and the meter and all the other stuff so yeah I th I, it's amazing how, uh, how fun his lyrics are but at the same time there's yeah, it's interesting because I was just talking with you about um, Richie Havens. Yeah. And in his DVD where he talks about the Richie Havens guitar method, he says, you know, for all you guys out there that you really want to create some beautiful music, you know, this D, A, D, F sharp, A, D tuning or whatever, just play it. He says, that's what I do. I, I don't, you know, and then the you'll you'll start to feel the music and then... The songs will just happen. The you know the words will just come. Yeah. And it, it'll just all feel right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, have, I remember in the Woodstock documentary or whatever he was talking about when he did the motherless child thing, and it just uh, I'm unclear, but I think what he said then was that uh, it just came out. He just started playing it, and that's what just came out. And Neil Young, he was interviewed by um, Charlie Rose. Think. Oh, well, Charlie Rose. I, I think so, it. yeah. And he was saying, you know, when uh, lightning strikes or when inspiration strikes, he says, I never am sure when it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, but when it happens, it happens. And I just try to um, save the result of that inspiration, you know, somehow either record it or transcribe it or whatever. And he yeah. says, that's how he's been so prolific throughout his career. Yeah. I love it. That's, what he says. I, that's actually been my my uh, kind of my struggle lately. That I just feel I feel like I'm I'm just kind of coming through it maybe a little bit or something. But uh, of uh, my first two all the songs I play or have been playing um, just happened without anything. Well, she's moving in. I mean, you know, if that just yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful song. That's really, you know. What led me to contact you? Oh, cool! And I like that pentatonic. Do 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 do. No, it was, it's the other way. Do 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 do. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> thanks, thanks. And yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever played with a band? No, not at all. I mean, you haven't heard me play. But, I mean, the closest I came, uh, there's a company called Groove Shark. Yeah. In Gainesville. Yeah, huh? And on Fridays, they all haul out their instruments. And right after I got this guitar, I brought it up there. Uh-huh. And um, a friend of mine works there named Chris. Uh-huh. He'll probably watch this video once we're done. Okay. And he picked up this guitar, and, man, he was just screaming on this guitar. He was having such a good time. Uh-huh. And then he said, let's play something. You know, there was a girl there with an electric violin and somebody on percussions. And he picked up, whoops, he picked up another guitar. And he goes, come on, you know, he says, pick up your guitar and play. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just learning. And he says, well, do you know your major scales? Uh -huh. And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, play a 1-4-5. Can you do a 1-4-5 and just keep, keep the tempo? Yeah. So I did. And that was like the funnest thing. Yeah. Because ever since I was 10, I've been practicing, uh -huh. but actually playing with somebody. And then there's, you know that music store in uh, Micanopy? Yeah. So they had a 12-string Martin for sale on Craigslist. Uh -huh. And I drove down there to take a look at it. And there was, some, wow. there was a guy in there, and you might know him, I don't know, local musician. And he was playing this um, six-string acoustic. And he says, I just love it. He says, maybe I can put it on layaway or something. You know, like they want 150 bucks for it. Uh -huh. And I go, wow, you know, maybe so. And he says, here, it's, it's, see what you think of this. I just, I just wrote this. So he starts playing. I actually recorded it. And then the other guy in there starts playing. And I picked up the Martin 12 string, and I go, so what should I play? And he said, one, four, five. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. So he gave me that. Uh -huh. And that was so much fun. And it was like not practice. It was actually doing it for a yeah. change instead of sitting by myself playing pentatonic scales. Uh -huh. You know, that'll drive you nuts. Yeah. Especially for 40 years now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's about as far as I've gone, man. Oh, man. Well, you seem, you seem relatively well adjusted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You haven't gotten to know me yet. 
<laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's that's what you gotta do, man. You need to you need to play with as many people as you can. Just play. Yeah, absolutely. Not to get my guitar out so you can both play. So, what's um? Well, why don't you uh, play us one more and uh, um, and then we'll okay do that. Sure. I'll, I'll I guess, play, uh, or, or huh? we can keep going as long as you like. Oh, <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> well, you gotta ride your bike sometimes. I do. Um, I, have you seen the Have you seen the um, the Paul Simon video where um, where it's he plays the song Duncan and uh, and there's a woman in the front row and 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 she goes you know I learned to play guitar to this song. Oh really? And he goes, What's that? You you learn to play guitar? Then? Come on. And uh, he gets her up and gives her his guitar to play. Yeah. And she sings it. Wow. And the, um, like, Paul Simon, his spirit and her, and her spirit is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Because Paul Simon's just, like, standing behind her. You know, it's like, loving it, loving it. And she's loving it, you know. And uh, it was just, it'll make your day. It'll make your week. It'll, it, it's, I mean, it's still making my day. And it came out, like, uh, I think it was summer. And, and then her spirit, too, she, she posted on uh, some blog. She's like, I'm so, you know, she was just grateful that other people were blessed by it, too. Yeah. You know, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as much as she loved it, she she loved just that other people were encouraged by it. And I, I wrote, I started writing the song. And it just kind of came out of nowhere. I had nothing to, but it, it's basically about. <coughs> it's called Ship Builders, because uh, we all have uh, skills and things that are our skills alone. And a lot of times, you know, kind of we. <laughs> play pentatonic scales for a long time and should be strumming it or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever. All right, so I'm still working it out, but, and I'll try to remember the chords, but I'll play that one. Let's see. We are all shipbuilding who haven't launched a skip yet. Christened her with champagne, sailed into the sunset. We are all midshipmen who never got our sea legs. The city languishing, those never ending summer dreads. Never believe. That never won't come And it will surely find you Live in your home The good things come to those who wait But the best things you give your life to make Nothing's ever born alone We are all oh, there we go, let's get this. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. We are all fear mongers. God, oh man. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Let's do this again. Solo. <laughs>
live in your home mm, Good things come and go to wait But the best things you give your life to make Nothing's ever born alone yeah, Papa's a creature I got some beliefs set up against a mystery and a cavalcade of sermon is we are all shipbuilders <laughs> yeah. sharpen our chisels building our mast yeah let's carve our mast yeah Let's launch this ship, yeah. Launch that ship, yeah. That's good. Oh, Thanks. I love it. Thanks. Shipbuilders. Yeah, it's a rough draft. <laughs> Can't wait to see that Paul Simon video. Oh, yeah. It's uh, and the song is Duncan. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. I still haven't learned that song, <laughs> but I got the uh, I got that album, uh, the album that that's on, and uh, I basically have played that song for about two weeks. Really? You know? Oh yeah, just in my car, just living in your fit. Yep, that's right. Hundred and seventy thousand miles on it. No way. In God. Five years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still, uh, still live out of a backpack, mostly. Nice. Uh, it's interesting. It's been good. It's been lots of stories. So you're gonna play Will Will's Pub next Friday. Yes. What? And you're gonna play stuff like um, she's she's moving in. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll I'll play that song a little better than <laughs> just did. Uh, and uh, what it is is it's a. Uh, I started this tour, we call it the Citrus Circuit Tour, and it's just about Florida songwriters coming together, and we we play each other's hometowns, and then a few non-hometowns together, and we all we all do our own sets, but we also all play together as well. Oh. So that's what we're doing on Friday, like we did it last night in Deland, we're going to Cocoa Beach tonight, um, doing Orlando uh, next Friday, and then Jacksonville next Saturday. We're actually playing uh, Sarasota on uh, the 28th wow. as well. Uh, so it's fun. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully well, we can cool. make it to the Orlando one. Uh, yeah, definitely. Next Friday. Yep. And I read, let's see, you basically you've got a drummer, uh -huh. or a percussion guy. Yeah. And, um, hey, uh, what else did I read? I was looking at, um, I haven't gone to your MySpace page. I went to the LawrenceFidel.com. I haven't been there in <laughs> a while either. I think either. that's the, the MySpace story these days. Oh, man, I, I can't even log in. I don't. Um, yeah, but it's up. Uh, yeah, and I have my website. It's my name. Cool. Which I'm learning how to do that stuff. So I guess that's what you do? That's what I do. Okay. A lot better than I do the guitar. Yeah. I've got, certainly got an appreciation for it, and I think I just need to practice. But, yeah, that's that's my... Uh, that's the trade I ply. Cool. And bicycles, too. Yeah. I just, I love riding the bikes. Oh, man. Well, this is a fun one. Yeah. You'll enjoy it. Get a little shot of this this way. For the listening audience, this is why I came over here, because I wanted to check out this cool Dutch bike. Yeah. But I also wanted to, to see you play this uh, guitar. And Oh, man. It is a treat. Well, Gorgeous. It will be around. Yeah. yeah, in the area. Yeah. How do you say his first name? Bojo. Bojo. Podanovic. Bojo Podanovic. Wow. Podanovic. Yeah, he's from um, Serbia. I like the way he uh, stamped everything. Yeah. Everything is stamped. Like is the that right? and stuff. Yeah. I've never seen that. Well, he's, he's well known, I guess, in various circles and... Uh, it's a beautiful guitar. It really is. Hasn't really done much for my playing, but... <laughs>
<laughs> it will. It's, it's fun. It's fun hearing you play it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's great. This is, uh, Who wrote that? Uh, Mississippi John Hurt. All right. Yeah. There's a. Uh, that's one of my favorite. Uh, on Pandora, you look at uh, his his uh, his channel. Really? They play a lot of his uh, a live album. I think it's a. Uh, I forget where it is. It's a, I think it's one of those uh, like Smithsonian shows kind of things or something like that. And that. Uh, I don't know how old he is, but he sounds like he's ancient at the recording, and is and is he's just picking it perfectly, you know, and, and his voice and everything, and he forgets lyrics and stuff, and like sings it. And I think I think it's one of the things I uh, about blues that I love about blues is it's not necessarily if you're thinking you're not playing the blues, kind of, you know, <laughs> like it is all it is all soul, and as long as you get communicate the soul it's working you know and uh you know he's he's he misses notes it's out of tune he, he forgets the lyrics and you don't you don't miss it because you know what he's saying because <laughs> you feel it it's so liberating and freeing you know you can you can really get caught up in uh, things that don't Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like that. And this Feeling just... good, just playing the uh, yeah. one, four, five. Yeah, one, four, five. Uh, where in that case, one and four. That's it. <laughs> well, like Richie Haven says, you know, you learned that one, four, five, and you can play all the songs I play. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I, I would... I, I would love to see him. He, uh... At the guitar shop I worked at, it was called a guitar shop in D.C. Uh, they uh, uh, used to deal with Guild back in the day, and evidently, you know, the double pick art thing was because he had to have it. Because <laughs> he, he literally <laughs> wore through his guitars. He would, yeah. just have, he would just slay them, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who else. Oh, like Willie Nelson's guitar looks like that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's all, Trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting pieces. And then, like I was telling you before, that old uh, Gibson I had, my buddy um, Kevin would come over and just, you know, the Gibson's all torn up and it's got a bowed neck, and, and he would make it sound so great. Wow. Just no issues. Yeah. Then I'd get it and it wouldn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, well, that, you, this, know. you know, this is a treat. Yeah, 
Yes, it is. It sounds it sounds Gorgeous. really nice. So, workmanship, amazing. So, what else are you going to play um, at at Will's this uh, this Friday? Um, I I actually I'll play another new one. Um, and uh, actually, it's really fun because the guys, uh, these guys who were were uh, the, on this tour, is a guy from uh, from Bradenton. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Matt Burke from a band called Have Gun Will Travel. Yeah. And uh, their new album's awesome. But uh, and then Devin Stewart is was in a band called The Takers. Mm -hmm. And they have a new band now called The Snake Healers. And then Michael Clater is just a solo singer songwriter, and. But uh, the very first Citrus Circuit we did about three years ago was with myself and um, Devin and Matt's bands. Long story long. <laughs> See if I can get you in the sun here a little bit because I can't. Oh, am I out of it? Or yeah. Can I move into well, it? Well, just a little bit so that people can see you. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's a little better. A little better. Well, kind of. There we go. <laughs> okay, I'll just stand here. Uh, yeah, there. That's a little better. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it, we we uh, know each other's stuff, and so actually, I they uh, on a few songs, I let them just play it, and I just grab the mic and just just dance and sing because uh, we even having some stomp offs, you know, getting the whole crowd just stomping together. And, and well, you got your boots on there. Yeah, these okay. these are these are my this is my drum set when I'm solo. Nice. <laughs> I've had, I've had these for. I don't know, seven years now probably, and I'm resold tons of times, coming to part again. The good thing about leather soles is you can stick them in the fire and they don't melt. <laughs> Learned that last night. All right. <laughs> so you feeling better? Uh, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to take a nap for sure before the gig tonight, which will be good. All right, so it's, it's 6 o'clock. Wow, I can't believe it's Is six. It six? Yeah, it's six. Oh, cool. no. oh, you know what? I just put this watch on and I didn't set uh, it. Yeah, it's four. Okay. According to, according to uh, Cupertino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who's some of your favorite music? Well, um, I like Stephen Stills a lot. I like Treetop Flyer. Treetop Flyer? That's yeah. a band? Uh, it, that's a song he does. Oh, okay. And, um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I like, uh, you know, vocalists. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, Bromberg. David Bromberg. Dave Bromberg. Uh -huh. I like his stuff. Um, was he, he was in, um, was David Bromberg in Nitty Gritty Dirt Band? I'm not sure. I don't know, but I, I guess I guess what I like is music that tells a story and conveys a message. Yeah. And, and you know, like like what you do, and, you know, she's she's moving in and it's just happy and you get the idea and and I like where there are gaps so you can fill in you know, your interpretation and it means something to you. Yeah. So you don't have to tell the whole story. Yeah. You just say the words that lead a, in a direction. I don't know, and I, you know, I can appreciate somebody who knows the pentatonic scales. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like Leon Russell a lot. Uh huh. You know, I like his song Alcatraz, uh huh, and uh, uh, Savoy Brown, Street Corner Talking. Uh huh. Uh, I like Janis Joplin a lot. Uh huh. And you know the traditional people. Uh, I like Tom Petty. You know, he, he oh, yeah. he's a good rock and roller, and he's yeah. from he's from right around here. Yeah. Bo Diddley, yeah, um, I like his stuff. You know, speaking of local, I wish you know. I could have met him. So did you ever I. meet him? I didn't. Um, I didn't meet him, and I suppose I could have because he's you know from just down the street, and he yeah. played you know so frequently around here. Uh huh. Um, I I met Greg Allman. Oh really? Yeah. That's cool. And I met Dick, Dickie Betts. Uh 